Johnny Mag with your daily comedy news. Jay Leno back on stage Sunday night. He went to the Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach, California. Apparently he does a show there every Sunday. Jay pulled up in his Tesla and grazed a cop car's tire. Oopsie. The police were chill about it. Apparently it wasn't a big deal. Jay got on stage. No details about what he did during his set yet. Conan O'Brien on his podcast told a story to John Barenthal. Conan told a story about getting jumped in a sort of dicey neighborhood. Conan recalls wearing a t-shirt with the Irish flag on it. While he was in an Italian neighborhood, Conan said, So I got my nose smashed in by some fellows who didn't like the cut of my jib. That's how I described them to the police. And the police were asking me, like, what did you do when you realized you were about to get hit? Like, what stance did you get into? Conan says, stance? Apparently, the residents of the Italian neighborhood thought Conan was being a bit of a wise guy. Conan checked out the story a few years later with his friend John, who said, yeah, you were being a little bit of a wise guy. Rory Scovel talked about why he likes to combine complex issues like politics and religion in his comedy. Rory said, even if an audience said they weren't interested, I don't know if that's enough for me to not talk about it. I'm so interested in it and people's investment in what it is. And a lot of that comes from my own being raised Catholic. But for me, I find those topics so refreshing and interesting and necessary because they are specifically topics that can create perspective for what the reality is to me. That's the kind of stuff I would want to talk about even in a non-joking way. I think comedy makes things easier to digest. You can tell me a doomsday thing, and if there's a joke, you just go, that's life. Nowadays, you get on stage, say something political, but if people ask you to keep politics out of it, but those people are few and far between because they think the vast majority of the audience understand that politics and religion and things that influence our society and lives are the exact things that a comic should be talking about. It's more interested and more fun to hear those perspectives from a comic than political pundits or broadcasters or Tucker Carlson. I'd rather hear it from a Republican comedian. I'd rather hear their take on it than someone who's not able to make it funny or interesting. Brian Regan has pondered the definition of what's funny and what isn't. He spoke to Gazette.com, and Brian said, Some people think others have to agree for it to be funny. I don't agree. If one person in the universe thinks it's funny, it's funny. At least to that person, maybe nobody else. Now, he clarified, I can't be so selfish and have an act where I do things only I think are funny. My act's a Venn diagram. I put what I think is funny on the graph, and I put what audiences think is funny on a graph, and wherever those intersect, that's my act. If you're mean-spirited and hurtful, that's not my cup of tea. I don't gravitate towards that kind of comedy, but if I'm trying to educate myself and my audience through comedy, everything's fair game. One of the beautiful things about comedy is you can redirect and make fun of the fact that something didn't work. Brain surgeons don't have that luxury. You can't cut in the wrong place and say, ah, it's funny what just happened there. Decider had a really good interview with Jeff Dunham, and they pointed out that in one of Dunham's press releases, it says that the 2019 Netflix special Jeff Dunham Beside Himself still ranks among the top five most watched Netflix comedy specials. Decider's question, a lot of comedians and show owners have complained they can't get hard numbers from Netflix. How do you know how high you ranked? Jeff said, in all these years, it's like we have agents and people who go, no, no, I can get the numbers. And you're like, how do you do that? Nobody will tell you, but it's always the agents. Somehow the agents, I don't know, back doors into there. Maybe there's couches and horrible things that go on to get the numbers. I don't know. They asked him about his new character, Earl. U-R-L is the spelling of Earl. Dunham said, I always try and create characters that I think people respond to. They have to identify with them. They have to know that character and understand them kind of intuitively. That's where Bubba J comes along. Just this redneck guy. A lot of people know what that guy is. Of course, Walter is a curmudgeonly old man who doesn't know that guy. Nobody knows a terrorist, but at the same time, I think Ahmed the dead terrorist was just this bumbling idiot with anger. Everybody can at least laugh with that. But then with Earl... Everyone gets stuck on their devices. 99% of us get stuck on their smart devices too much of the time. So I thought, I'm going to create a younger guy that also has the problem of living in his parents' basement. So many families are dealing with that now. The kids come back and won't go away. Hey, do me a favor. The next time you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. That'll open up the monetization part of YouTube for me. You don't have to get the podcast on YouTube, but become a subscriber. That'll help me out. Nice easy thing. One click and then we're good. We haven't visited Gossip Corner in a while. Pete Davidson and Emily Ratajkowski, they went public. They were at the Knicks game the other day. Sitting courtside. Pete's not laying low, and he was sitting right next to Ben Stiller. I dropped some G's in there. The Queens came out in that story. Leave it in. Right before Thanksgiving, the Hollywood Reporter reported that Pandora has been stopped from advancing an antitrust suit against a bunch of comedians, including the estates of Robin Williams and George Carlin. The lawsuit had accused them of monopolizing the market for the rights to the recordings of their routines. The Hollywood Reporter writes, A federal judge on Wednesday dismissed Pandora's countersuit against the comedians and their licensing group word collection, finding the audio giant failed to connect the agency's impressive but short list of comedians whose work it licenses to the company's inability to assemble the critical mass needed to offer a viable comedy streaming service, especially when it offers recordings by several thousand other comedians. 
CBS is developing a sitcom called Family Insurance, a single camera Latinx family workplace comedy, co-written, executive produced and starring Al Madrigal. I'm a big fan of Al's comedy, so that's good news. The Laugh Button reports comedian Michael McIntyre is bringing his game show to the United States. It's called The Wheel. Michael created the UK version, and that version features celebrity guests who are so-called experts in a specific field to help contestants answer trivia questions. The first episode will feature Andy Richter and Lonnie Love, and following the rule of Andy Richter being involved in projects, this one's going to get canceled. I'm putting five bucks on canceled because of Andy Richter. You think I'm being mean? Look up the resume. I went on the IMDb late night with Conan O'Brien, and he was there from 94 to 2000. Okay, but I really feel like Conan's show kicked in after Andy left. We can argue about that if you'd like. Andy had a show in 2002, Andy Richter Controls the Universe, 19 episodes. He played Bob Chase on Quintuplets. Remember that? No, you don't. Quintuplets ran 22 episodes. What was Quintuplets? Parents Bob, played by Andy Richter, and Carol work hard to raise their very different teenage quintuplets. This aired on Fox 2004-2005. Do you remember that? Did that happen? Is that the Bob's Burgers of 2004? I think so. Andy Barker P.I. was a TV series that ran six episodes in 2007. An accountant moves into an office formerly owned by a private investigator and begins picking up side work as a private eye. Do you remember that one? No, you don't. All right, here's one. 85 episodes of The Penguins of Madagascar. He played Mort. All right, you got me, Andy. And of course, The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien. That didn't last long. 144 episodes. Hashtag six seasons in a movie, Luis Guzman. He's ready to go back to community college. He played a fictionalized version of himself on Community. Remember that one? He is Greendale's most famous alum. He even has his own statue on campus. Would he like to be in the movie? He said, yes, I'd love to be. I mean, I'm part of that community legacy. I'd love to do it. And from the Washington Post, comedian Freddie Roman, former dean of the Friars Club, passed away on Saturday. He was 85 years old. Freddie Roman made his name performing at hotels and resorts in the Catskill Mountains. If you've ever heard the term Borscht Belt, that's what this is. Paul Reiser wrote on Twitter, a great loss to the world of comedy. He was such a huge supporter and mentor when I was starting out. A great, all caps, comic. The ultimate pro with the biggest heart. I'll miss our phone calls and his big, beautiful laugh. That's your comedy news for today. Follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, audio version on YouTube. While you're there, hit the subscribe button. Appreciate it. See you tomorrow.